Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will go through a few more uh, desktop specialist exam practice questions. So let's start. So first question is, which of the following are valid ways of grouping data? Using marks in the view from the analytics pane from the dimensions shelf using labels in the view. So if we go to Tableau and let's say we build a chart over here. Let's say we bring subcategory and then sales here. Okay. So they are saying using marks in the view. So these are marks basically. So let's say if I select one or two marks, then what happens is or three marks, I, we get this option of creating groups, right? Even sets, all these options you get, right? So from here, definitely we can do the group, right? Grouping data from the analytics pane. So analytics pane, if we go here, we don't have any option of grouping data from the dimensions shelf. So dimensions shelf means this dimensions basically here definitely if you click on any dimension you will get the option of create group so definitely from here also we can group the data and using labels in the view so labels means this one these are marks and these are labels so here if we select let's say these two or three labels then again we get the option to create the group right we can group the members like this so this right like now members are grouped and a new dimension gets created which is a group right so definitely only uh, from the analytics pane this option is not a right answer rest three are correct okay second question is which of the following represent a valid method to create a bullet graph with the least number of fields possible so stress is on the least number of fields now this is uh, fairly simple okay if you want i mean you can take the help of show me here although in exam you won't get show me okay so just you know practice all these charts like check on these hover on these charts and try to remember or maybe practice and then you can easily remember what and how it's built so here if you hover this is a bullet graph right and you can easily see that for bullet graphs try zero or more dimensions and two measures so that is the least number of fields right two measures so here option would be c two measures right yeah so that's the answer and also what i would suggest is you can uh, go through the tableau help also so this was regarding the first question grouping your data you can easily uh, read about this how to create a group how to create a group for from a field in the data pane include another group edit a group right so all this uh, literature you can read and uh, try to understand then build a bullet graph also i leave all the links in the description of this video now again let's go here so this was bullet graph then third question is uh, blank is useful when you need to change how the data source is configured on a sheet by sheet basis and when you want to combine databases that don't allow relationships or joins okay so databases which don't allow relationships or joins okay so definitely data joining or unioning cannot be done right because they are not allowing joins or relationships and data segregation here we are not bothered about segregation right so obviously the uh, logical answer is data blending over here okay and what i would suggest is read this blend your data topic from tableau help okay it's very good uh, literature article over here right options to combine data steps for blending data right here you can read what is relationship what is joins and what is blends so here if you see uh, Blends can handle different levels of detail and also work with published data sources. Blends don't create a new blended data source, therefore can't be published as a blended data source. Instead, they are simply blended results visualized per sheet. Okay, that is where you can uh, easily, you know, do the uh, configuration on a sheet by sheet basis, right? So steps for blending data, they have explained using a, a animation over here, how you can blend the data, 
right and then understand the primary and secondary data sources so the question can come on this also which one represents primary which one represents secondary right working across blended data sources right how you can define the blend relationships for blending how do you establish a link if there are multiple links then how do you do that right so here if you click you, you will see that how to do multiple uh, links right then what is the difference between joins and data blending this is also a potential question right then what is left join what is data blending data blending at a glance so this is a very very important topic data blending definitely you will get a question on this so try to read this thoroughly and understand this concept okay now fourth question is which of the following can you use to create a histogram so again i'll take you to tableau and if you take help of show me and over on histogram then what do you see for a histogram view try one measure so definitely the answer is one measure right then true or false you get different filtering options for categorical and quantitative data okay definitely if you have uh, practiced this then you would know the answer which is true right and uh, to read more on this okay this was for histogram then here if you go you can easily see that filter categorical data so the question is you get different filtering options for categorical and quantitative data so filter categorical data so here if you see dimensions contained discrete categorical data so filtering this type of field generally involves selecting the values to include or exclude right and when you go to quantitative data measures contain quantitative data so filtering this type of field generally involves selecting a range of values that you want to include so that's the difference right so that is why it's true further you can read this topic okay this is a uh, filter card modes and filter table calculations filter dates it's all these topics just get acquainted with now sixth question is which of the following is an example of date part okay so if you would have studied date part and date value in tableau okay i have a video on this also so date part is nothing but a part of the date right whether it could be a month it could be year it could be week it could be quarter basically a part of a date that's uh, what it technically signifies right date part and the moment it gets associated with any uh, year or date or quarter you know like here if you see september 2023 now it's not a date part right because you cannot identify it as a month or a year right it's like a particular month of a year so definitely that is not something uh, related to date part right same for this c option and same for d option so definitely only option left is b november which is like month month is a date part right so here you can again go and study these date functions there might be a question from any of these like what is date add date diff date name date pass date part right and uh, how is the uh, structure okay syntax of these uh, functions right so here if you see this date part okay and for an example you see a date part here they have referred to week here they have used day right similarly month quarter year these are all date parts next question is how does tableau know at which level to aggregate values so first is aggregation is always done by using tableau special formulas uh, definitely no tableau doesn't support aggregate values nls2 definitely no values are always aggregated at the level of granularity of the worksheet uh, this is definitely true i have a video on granularity also i'll leave the link just go through it in case you want to revise the concept then values are always aggregated at the level of date part again this is uh, not the correct one so definitely c is the answer and here there's a tableau help on data aggregation in tableau you can change the aggregation of a measure in the view you can study on aggregating dimensions how do you do that list of predefined aggregations in tableau 
And let's go to next question. Dash is a method for appending values, that is rows, okay, to tables. You can use this method if both tables have the same columns. The result is a virtual table that has the same columns but extends vertically by data, right? So definitely if you use joins, then data doesn't expand vertically, it expands horizontally, right? And combining, again, we don't have such thing, right? Blending uh, happens, again, as a left join. So it's kind of join only. So only option left is union. So definitely when you use union, one table gets append to other table, right? So thereby it increases vertically. Here you have this union, your data. They have very beautifully explained. Okay, they have taken three data sources, then done the union. What is the result? How you can do, right? All these things they have explained here. So better, I would say, just go through all this. They have explained here union with null values, union with columns that have been merged, right? Merge, mismatch fields in the union. Okay. So just go through this. Then next question is by default, what does Tableau do when you connect to a data source? Okay. So creates an extract of the data. Definitely no. Sorts the data in descending order. Definitely no. Loads your actual file into Tableau. Uh, no, it doesn't load actual file. So, but it brings in data definitely from file. So again, no creates a live connection to the data. Yes, definitely. Yes. Whenever you connect to any data source, it's a live connection. It's, it's so Tableau establishes a live connection to the data. So yes, that is something which is the right answer. Okay, true or false. We get different color palette options if we drop a discrete field on color in the marks card compared to if we drop a continuous field on color. So that is right uh, because because of the nature, right? Like continuous field would have a gradient, right? Because it's continuous in nature and discrete field will always have different colors, right? Because they are discrete in nature. So you can go through again, Tableau help over here, color palette, right? If you see here, you can change the color of the value here. If you see quantitative palettes, right? This is what I was talking about. This is like a continuous range of colors and categorical palettes. You will have basically different colors, right? You can change the palette also. And then this is again a gradient for quantitative how you can configure color effects, you can change the opacity, you can mark borders, mark hellos, right, markers. So all these things you can do. But yeah, uh, coming back to question, the ans answer is true. Okay. So that's it guys for this video. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.